pretty sure I know everybody. And uh, let's get started. So come on over to your mat. So if you're practicing on a mat, great. If not, also great. You can practice on a carpet. You can roll out a, um, a towel or a blanket. You can practice on whatever floor you happen to be on. Just have lots of props around you. So I always have lots of blankets and pillows around me to support the body uh, for sensitive parts of the body, for hard floors. Blocks are really handy to have around you to elevate the floor for yourself or you can use your dog um, or anything around you. So stacks of books, stacks of pillows, whatever you happen to have handy around you. I also have a strap. You can use a strap. Uh, you could use your towel or your blanket if you're using that or a scarf or a belt, anything, anything that's around you or, you know, you can use your socks or sweater. Let's get started. So we're going to come down to our mat to begin in a comfortable seated position. I'm going to sit up on a rolled up blanket. You can roll up the back of your yoga mat if you'd like, and, or you can roll up a towel or a blanket or a pillow, anything that you happen to have handy. And let's take a moment to sit up really nice and tall, lengthen our spine, settling in the shoulders here. You can cross one chin on top of the other, one chin in front of the other. Or you could always take your legs a little bit further forward to offer your body the space it may require. Let's take a moment to ground ourselves here. A lot of information to take in. And let's just allow ourselves to settle nice and present in the body. We're just beginning to allow the body to settle in a sense of stillness, whatever that means for you. And just tuning our attention inward. If you'd like, you can close the eyes. If not, you can just turn the gaze downward, allow it to soften. As we invite this idea into the physical expression of our body, it starts to, to relate to what's happening on the inside as we slow things down on the outside. Perhaps we notice the breath slowing down. Perhaps we notice the thoughts slowing down. One of the most challenging mind states that, that we are often in is, is the comparing mind. It can be challenging to, to get out of that state of comparing, whether we're comparing ourselves to others or to past, per, past versions of ourselves or comparing ourselves to our, to our expectations as to what we should be doing. And we can get trapped in this, this comparison. And one of the most useful tools that I have found to, to help with that is to ground ourselves into the present moment. Feel the experience of the body sitting. What parts of your body are touching the ground? Notice that we are hearing This is happening without us having to really actively hear. The body is doing this. Feel the experience of the body breathing. 
we've been breathing and we haven't had to tell our body to breathe. It happens. Noticing the body just doing its thing. The body is feeling, hearing, breathing. Here we are. Experiment taking a nice long breath in through the nose and out through the mouth. In through the nose, out through the mouth. Allow yourself to really feel the experience of breathing in through the nose, out through the mouth. Feel the obvious, feel the subtle. Again, in through the nose and out. Allow your eyes to open. Nice, soft focus for the eyes. And with your hands at your thighs, take a nice inhale, lift your heart forward and gently arch your back. And as you exhale, begin to round your back, tuck your chin towards your chest. Inhale, lift your heart forward, arch your back. And as you exhale, round your back, tuck your chin to your chest. Moving back and forth here through these seated cats and cows, taking your time. Continue with that, or if there's some availability, start to draw some circles with your ribs. So send the ribs around to one side, over to the back, to the other side, and forward. Just roll it around a little. You can let your shoulders get involved. You can let your hips get involved. And then switching direction. Easing your way into movement. Good. And nice and slowly, let's come back to a neutral spine. Take your left hand across to your right side, whether it's on your leg or your waist. Take your right hand behind you, tent your fingertips down, and take an inhale, lift and lengthen through your spine. From there, start to reach your right arm back, so lifting up and out of the waist. Keeping your left hand where it is, just gently lift your right arm up and over towards the left. Breathing, open back up into that twist, opening up. And two more times, lifting that arm up overhead, tilting towards the left. Coming through center. One more time, lifting up. And coming through center. Let's come through center and take the other side. So right hand comes to your left leg. Tent your left fingertips behind you. Take a nice inhale, lift up. As you exhale, soften into that twist. And starting to extend that left arm nice and long behind you. Keep lifting out of the waist. Keeping that right hand where it is. Allow your left arm to lift up and over side bend towards the right. And coming back to that twist, opening up. Two more times, lifting up and over towards the right. And coming back through center. And one more time, opening up. Good. Gently bringing yourself back through center. Let's come to our hands and our knees here. So just shift your your feet behind you, remove whatever it was you were seated on and come on up to your hands 
and your knees. Find a nice tabletop position and engage your belly. Lengthen your spine. Move through some cats and cows here. So nice inhale, lift your heart, arch your back. Exhale, round your back, tuck your chin. Inhale, lift your heart, arch your back. Exhale, round your back, tuck your chin. And a few more times there. Good. Good. Lovely. Let's find our way back to a nice neutral spine here. Think of really engaging your belly and finding some length in your tailbone. Press your palms into the floor and start to press the shoulder blades away from each other. So there's a slight, do slight doming in the upper back. And you can stay right here or start to reach your arms forward, lengthen your spine into a puppy pose and see if you can find that same engagement. So engage the belly. See if you can find a nice internal rotation for the armpits so that upper back is really engaged and we're lengthening your spine. Take a breath. And you can stay with that or move into a downward facing dog. So rooting your palms down, tucking your toes and lifting up and back into a downward facing dog. Now same idea. It's tucking to kind of sink into your downward facing dog, but let's really engage the belly. Press into the palms and find an internal rotation for the armpits. So we have a nice doming in the upper back, slight doming. It may not be visible, but there's an active engagement as the shoulder blades sort of move away from each other. So we have a lot of broadening in the upper back. Because it's kind of tempting to press those shoulder blades together and really sink into the pose. But for today, I'd really love us to find that activation. Now again, you can modify your down dog if it doesn't feel right for you. You can come down and take that puppy pose onto your knees here, lengthening your spine, find that same engagement, or come into your tabletop position. Adjusting and modifying the practice to support your body's needs. I have a broken wrist. Downward facing dog is not great for me right now. So I'm often taking a puppy pose. Give yourself permission to adjust to change whenever you'd like. Take a nice breath there. You may want to take a little bit of movement, maybe pedal out through the knees, maybe sway your hips or shake out your head. Any movement there that feels good. One more breath. Good, and then wherever you are, lower your knees down. Send your hips back towards your heels into a variation of a child pose. So knees as wide or as narrow as you like. You can allow your head to rest, your forehead to rest on the mat or the backs of your hands or double up your fists or forearms or place a pillow or towel underneath your forehead. You can support the fronts of your knees by doubling up your mat or placing a soft pillow or towel there. You could also roll up a towel or a pillow behind the knees if you want a little bit of a lift or support or send your weight further forward if child's pose is not a comfortable pose for you. And you could also come into a nice comfortable seated position. I love for us to instead practice poses and shapes to more practice ideas. So inviting the idea into the body of rest. So whatever shape you take, allow it to be that idea for your body. Allow your body to rest, bringing the attention inward. And remind yourself to come here at any point as we move through our practice, at any point as you move through your day. Give yourself those moments. It can be really powerful. So now let's come back up to our hands and our knees tabletop position. If your wrists are sensitive or you have a broken wrist, come on down to your forearms here. Now from here, I'm going to tuck the right toes back behind me and then open up that right leg towards the side. So I'm pressing the outer edge of that right foot down, lengthening that right leg towards the side. I'm going to take a nice inhale, lift the heart arch to back. And then start to round the back, tuck the chin to the chest. So cats and cows here, continuing, but with that leg extended. Good. Breathing deeply. And one more time. 
Okay, come back to a neutral spine to support bringing that right knee back underneath your hip, and we'll take the other side. So press your left toes back behind you and open up that left leg towards the side. I'm just going to turn to you so you can see. Pressing the pinky toe side of that left foot down, and you may be on your hands and your knees. That's great. Otherwise, you can come down to your forearms with me if the wrists are sensitive. And move through your cats and cows here. So inhale, lift your heart, arch your back. Exhale, round your back, tuck your chin. Gently moving back and forth. I'm just going to send my weight further forward. But keep that leg really grounded down. Good. Let's just take one more. Good. And then support that knee in coming back underneath your hip. And from here, reaching your arms forward, lower onto your forearms, bring your weight forward and drop your hips coming into a sphinx pose. Lifting your heart forward between your shoulders, lengthening your spine, opening up the front of the body. And notice if you can find some length in the back of your neck, still finding lots of space for breath. And then we'll slowly lower back down. From there, find your palms beside your ribs. Gently lift into a nice low cobra. Now keep that cobra nice and low, lengthening out of your waist. Experiment by taking the hands away from the mat. So feeling that strength, pressing the tops of the feet down into the mat. Finding length, length as opposed to height. Always working towards more space in the body. Good. And then we'll slowly lower back down. And again, find your palms down. Gently lift up into a nice low cobra. If you feel comfortable, you can come up a little bit higher. I won't. I'm going to stick with Sphinx pose today, taking the forearms down, lifting the heart forward. And you can stick with me, or you can press those palms down, come into a nice low cobra a high cobra, or you can really press into those palms, press the tops of the feet down into the mat and lift the knees into an upward facing dog. Modify to support your body's needs. Modify, modifying is, a, is a, an expression of strength. It's not an expression of weakness. So, so really feeling powerful when you offer your body what it needs. Good. Nice and slowly, let's lower back down, push up through your hands and your knees, tucking your toes and lifting up and back into down dog, or again, take tabletop or your puppy pose. Taking a nice breath there as you lengthen your spine. And wherever you are, lift your knees and slowly start to tiptoe or walk your feet forward to your hands. Bend your knees there as much as you'd like and hang. Nice and heavy over your legs, let your head go. Take a deeper bend to your knees, slowly start to roll yourself up, bringing yourself up to stand. Good. Now once you're off, you can keep your feet hip width apart or wider if you'd like, or take big toes touching, heels a sliver apart for Tadasana Mountain Pose at the front of our mat. Moving right away into Utkatasana, we'll bend into our knees, engage the belly, lengthen the tailbone. Checking in, making sure you can see your toes in front of your knees and perhaps even wiggle the toes so the weight is really far back. Hands can stay at your waist or hands can be at prayer or you can lift your arms up overhead. Just allow the shoulders to settle on the back body. Take a breath and steady your gaze. Good, now from here, connecting the palms through center, bow forward over your legs, let your head go. Finding your palms to your shins, reach your heart forward and lengthen your spine into a halfway lift. You can also take your hands up to your thighs or place your hands up on an elevated surface, a block, a chair, whatever's around. And then as you exhale, fold forward, root your palms down, step your feet back and we'll find a plank pose. So I'm gonna modify my plank with my forearms and my knees down. You can modify with me or you can come up hands and knees, or if you'd like, hands and feet, or even forearms and feet. 
So finding a nice plank where we feel nice and strong and stable, reaching our heart forward, engaging the belly, soften the sides of your neck, steady your breath. And then nice and slowly lower yourself down to the belly, either from your hands and your knees or your hands and your feet. And then slowly with an inhale, lift your heart forward into your back bend, sphinx, low cobra, high cobra, or upward facing dog. So either with the forearms or the palms down, reaching your heart forward with that nice long inhale. And with your exhale, slowly release back down, push up through to your hands and your knees, tucking your toes, lifting up and back down dog or table or puppy. Always giving yourself lots of options and reminders to rest. Stay present in the sensations of your body so we're not comparing to what we think we should be doing. Nice breath in and out. Wherever you are, lift your knees. Slowly start to tiptoe, walk, step, or you can hop your feet forward to your hands and hang heavy over your legs. From there, find your halfway lift, palms come to the shins, the thighs are a prop, reaching forward. As you exhale, fold, take an inhale, squeeze the arms up, come to stand. And exhale right back through to your Tadasana. One more time like that, beginning with your Utkatasana. So bend into the knees, find the hip points gently tilting up. So we're activating the core, lengthening the tailbone, settle the shoulders and the gaze. Weight is so far back in your heels, you can maybe lift your toes. And then connecting through your palms, bow forward over your legs. Finding your palms to your shins, lengthen your spine, halfway lift. And then rooting your palms down, step back to your plank pose, whichever plank you choose to take today. Take a breath there so we feel really nice and strong. Lower down to the belly with your exhale and on your inhale, lift your heart into your back bend, sphinx, cobra, or upward facing dog, opening up the front of the body. And nice and slowly with an exhale, lower down, push up through to hands and knees, find your downward facing dog, tucking the toes, lifting the hips, or table, or puppy. Finding a moment to really connect in with your breath, feeling the breath moving in and out. Good. Wherever you are, lifting your knees and slowly start to tiptoe or walk your feet forward to your hands, allowing yourself to hang nice and heavy. Find your palms to your shins, reach your heart forward, halfway lift. And as you exhale, fold. Inhale, squeeze the arms up, bringing yourself to stand. And exhale, right away, move into your chair pose, Utkatasana, bending into the knees. Finding that arm variation that works best for you. Adjusting that pelvis so you feel really nice and strong and stable. Lots of length in the low back. Good. From here, connecting the palms, bow forward over your legs. Find your halfway lift. Inhale, shine the heart forward. And then as you exhale, step your right leg back behind you. Now from here, lowering that right knee down to your mat, feel free to support yourself with props. So if the floor feels far away from you, place your hands up on an elevated prop. If that back knee feels sensitive, double up your mat for extra padding or use a pillow or towel underneath your knee. As you reach your heart forward, see if you can activate the top inner thigh so we're really squeezing towards the center line of the body. And feel free to stay right here or if it's available, lift your hands up to your thigh and then from there, perhaps reach your arms up overhead. As you reach up through the fingertips, lengthen out of your waist, find that pelvic floor slightly lifted, settle the shoulders. Good, now from here, we're gonna tilt our torso forward, reach our arms back, lengthening through your spine. And we're going to lift that back knee. So if you need to take your hands down for support, go ahead. Otherwise, keep those arms reaching back. Tuck your back toes and lift that back knee. Keep that torso nice and long, reaching through the crown of the head. 
Now from here, you can take your hands to your thighs or hands can come down to the floor if that feels more supportive. Or if you'd like, reach your arms forward and lift your torso up, coming into crescent lunge. Once you're there, soften your shoulders, steady your gaze. Allow the jaw to settle. Feeling the body breathing. Good. Beautiful. From here, start to straighten your front leg, lifting up. Pivot your back foot flat, bend back into that front knee and find warrior two. Allow your front heel to line up with your back arch as you press through the pinky toe side of that back foot. Allow those shoulders to settle, settle and gaze as past those front fingertips. Nice, easy, full breaths. And from there, cartwheel your hands down to meet your front foot, pin it onto the ball of your back foot and step your back foot forward to meet your front foot. Hang heavy over your legs, take a moment. Shoulders can really fall heavy here. And then step your left leg back behind you. Again, lowering that left knee down to the mat. Feel free to place your hands up on, an, on a prop and feel free to support that back knee. As you reach your heart forward here and you lengthen out of your waist, see if you can sort of squeeze. So here you can even see I'm dumping into my right hip and sort of sinking. And what I'd love us to do is think about the top and your thighs squeezing towards each other and finding a little bit more support through the center of the body. And you can stay here with your hands down or if you feel ready, come on up to the thigh. From there, if you'd like, lift your arms up overhead. Steady your gaze as you steady your breath. Now, same thing on this side. So again, we're gonna lift that back knee. Let's tilt our torso forward, reach our arms back. As you reach through the fingertips, lengthen out of your waist. If you need to take your hands down for support, you can do so, or hands can come to the thigh. Otherwise, keep those arms back, tuck the back toes, and lift that back knee. Now, as you come into this variation of crescent lunge, you may need to place those hands down before you bring your torso up. That's perfectly okay. Otherwise, reach your arms forward and up and lift your torso up into that crescent lunge. Once you're there, think about lifting those hip points up away from the hip flexor. So we're not thinking into the joint, we're lifting out of the joint. Steady the gaze. Breathe. And then starting to straighten that front leg, lifting up, 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 up. Pivot your back foot. Flat, bend back into that front knee for warrior two, heel to arch alignment. Steady, settle, settle the shoulders and the gaze is past those front fingertips. Some nice full breaths here. Notice if you're holding in the face, see if you can let it soften. And then nice and slowly let's cartwheel our hands down to meet our front foot, pivot onto the ball of the back foot and step your back foot forward to meet your front foot and hang nice and heavy over your legs. From there, find your halfway lift, pumps under the shins, the thighs, or a prop, reaching your heart forward as you exhale, fold. Take a nice inhale, sweep the arms up, bringing yourself to stand, and exhale right away into your Utkatasana, your chair pose. Bringing those arms to a variation that feels supportive for you. Start to think about that pelvis. So what can we do so that if you think of your pelvis as a bowl, we don't, and it's full of like water or soup, we don't want to spill it. We want to let that pelvis be nice and neutral. So lengthen that tailbone. Breathing. Connecting your palms, gently bow forward over your legs. Palms come to the shins, the thighs are a prop, halfway lift. As you exhale, fold and step your right leg back behind you, lowering that right knee down. Now feel free to stay with the hands down or lift your arms up overhead. Support yourself with whatever props you need to. Allow your shoulders to settle and anchor yourself into your breath. Reaching the arms back as you tilt your torso forward. Body is a nice long arrow. Now again, you may need to place your hands down. That's okay, allow it. Otherwise, tuck your back toes and lift your back knee. 
Now again, you may need to place your hands down, go right ahead. Otherwise, reach your arms forward as you lift your torso up, press and lunge. Settle those shoulders. And then take a bend into that back knee and just allow that back knee to bend down just a wee bit, maybe even tap the floor and let it hover, breathe. Good, now as you straighten that back leg, straighten your front leg, lifting up, pivot your back foot flat and land into a warrior two. Breathing as you settle here, soften your jaw. Now from this warrior two, lift your arms up, straighten your front leg. As you bring your hands to heart center, start to bend that right knee, your back knee. So we're bending into a variation of Skandasana. Lift up onto the ball of, or sorry, the heel of your left foot. So the toes are up towards the ceiling as we bend our weight towards that right leg. Take a moment there. And then as you lift and lengthen up, open back into your warrior two. Take a moment. And we'll take that two more times. So lifting up, your front heel lifts. We bend into that back knee. A variation of Skandasana. Inhale, lift, warrior two. Inhale, lift, Skandasana. One more time into your warrior two. Hold your warrior two. And then cartwheel your hands down, pivot onto the ball of your back foot and step your back foot forward to meet your front foot. Take a moment. And then we'll step that left leg back behind you, lowering that left knee down to your mat. Support yourself as you see fit. When you're ready, lift those arms up overhead. Find that nice low lunge. Reaching your arms back, torso reaches forward. Find a nice long arrow with the body. Support yourself with those hands down if you need to. Otherwise, tuck the back toes and lift the back knee. Again, you can support yourself by placing those hands down or reach your arms forward and up, lifting your torso into that crescent lunge. Find stability, and then when you're ready, bend into that back knee, just hovering up off of the floor. I like to just give it a tap so I know I'm there and then gently lift away from the floor, just hovering. Settle the shoulders, breathe, build that strength. And then as we straighten the back leg, we'll straighten the front leg, lifting up and open into your warrior two, finding lots of strength here, heel to arch alignment. Steady yourself into pose and just be in this pose as if we were only going to be here. Good. Then we'll straighten our front leg and as we lift our arms up, bring your hands to heart center. Lift the toes of that right foot so we're on our heel and bend into that left knee for that variation of Skandasana. Take a moment there. Make sure your knee is tracking over your toes. And then lifting back up, find your way back to warrior two, opening up, bending into that right knee. We'll take that two more times. So inhale, lift up, front toes lift as we bend into that left knee. Come back through to center, warrior two. And lifting up, skandasana, bend into that left knee, lower the hips. Inhale, lift up, exhale back to warrior two. Cartwheel your hands down, pivot onto the ball of that back foot and step your back foot forward to meet your front foot. Take a moment to hang nice and heavy over your legs. Finding your palms to your shins, lengthen your spine as you exhale, fold. Take an inhale, sweep the arms up, come to stand and right away into your Utkatasana, bend into your knees. Letting the arms be in the position they need to be, finding that stability through your pelvis. Connecting your palms through center, bow forward. Palms come to your shins, your thighs are a prop, halfway lift. As you exhale, fold and step your right leg back behind you, lowering that right knee down. Use whatever props you'd like. Lifting your torso up into that crescent, into that nice low lunge, lifting the fingertips up. And again, you can use your hands for support or reach your arms back, long torso, nice long arrow, tuck your back toes, lift your back knee, use your hands for support or lift the arms forward and up. 
As you exhale, bend into that back knee, allow it to hover. As you inhale, straighten, lift everything up, pivot that back foot flat, warrior two. Once you're there, straighten your front leg, lift your front toes, bend into that back knee, Skandasana. Inhale, come back through to center, warrior two. Lifting up, Skandasana, bend into that back knee, come through center, warrior two. One more time, lifting up, Skandasana, coming through center, warrior two. Now this time, lift up, turn both toes to face the long side of your mat, and organize yourself here so that your heels are in line. Lifting up and out of your waist, soften the shoulders, breathe. Nice inhale lifts you up. As you exhale, tilt forward, come into a forward fold. Walking your fingertips forward as you press your hips back, find a long spine, and then start to walk your hands back to a forward fold. Perhaps with the palms down, otherwise you can allow the arms to dangle or place the hands up on a prop if that floor feels really far away. And just see if you can let your head go. Really supporting, lengthening the spine by releasing the weight of the upper body. Take a nice deep breath in and out. From here, we'll slowly start to walk our hands towards the left side. And you don't have to reach the foot, just working towards moving in that direction. And then we'll take a bend into our left knee, keeping the right leg nice and long. And your hands can be up on a prop if that floor feels far away from you. Or you can take hands or elbows to your left thigh for support. You can stay right here. This is more than enough. Or start to turn those toes up, to, the right toes up towards the ceiling, rotating your right hip open. And you can stay with those hips lifted or if it's comfortable, lowering your hips again into Skandasana, a lower version here, just allowing those hips to open up, soften your jaw. And we're going to come into our lunge here. So starting to as, uh, lift the hips to turn your left toes to face the front of the mat, pivot onto the ball of that back foot and come into your lunge facing the front of the mat. And we'll slowly step our back foot forward to meet our front foot. Take a moment to hang nice and heavy. And then stepping your left leg back behind you, lowering that left knee down to the mat. Support yourself with whatever props you'd like. And when and if you're ready, lift your torso up. Breathing, find stability through the center line of the body, reaching the arms back, tilting the torso forward. Nice long arrow. Use your hands for support or tuck the back toes, lift your back knee. Again, you can use your hands or reaching the arms forward and up, bringing yourself to stand or sort of lift the torso. And then as you exhale, bend that back knee, allow it to hover. Just hovering, building lots of strength. Then straightening the back leg, straightening the front leg and opening up into your warrior two. Bending into that front knee, shoulders on the back body. Inhale, lifting up. Lift that front heel, bend into that back knee, standing up in the Skandasana here, and then lifting back up into your warrior two. Two more times, lifting up, bending into that back knee. Inhale, lifting up, exhale back to warrior two. One more time, lifting up. Good, bending into Skandasana, and then coming back through to warrior two. This time, straighten up. Turn your toes again to face the long edge of your mat. Making sure your heels are in line. Your, your big toes are slightly pigeon-toed in, just so the outer edges of your feet are parallel to your mat. Lift up and out of the waist. And then as you exhale, tilt your torso forward, come into that forward fold. From there, walk your fingertips forward and lengthen your spine, keeping your hips back. And then come into that forward fold, either with the palms down or the arms dangling. See if you can really release your head, maybe even give it a little shake out. Good. Nice and slowly start to walk your hands towards the direction of your right foot. 
breathing. Good, and then bending into that, sorry, which foot are we bending into? Bending into our right knee, keeping the left leg nice and long here. And if you need support, bring your forearms or your hands to your thigh. And we'll work towards that variation of Skandasana. So you can stay right there or turn your left toes up towards ceiling with your heel down. You can keep your hips lifted or you can lower those hips into your Skandasana. It doesn't have to be all the way down. We can be upright where we were before, taking that variation that's available in our bodies so we're not forcing our bodies into a shape just because a yoga teacher asked you to. That's not what this practice is about. Take a nice deep breath in and out. Now we're gonna come into that lunge. So starting to lift your hips, turn your right toes towards the front of the mat, pivot onto the ball of that back foot. And when you're ready, step your back foot forward to meet your front foot and hang heavy over your legs. Finding your halfway lift, palms come to the shins, the thighs are across. As you exhale, fold, take an inhale, sweep the arms up, bringing yourself up to stand. And exhale, bring yourself back into your Utkatasana. And we'll just take a moment in our Utkatasana here to really feel that strength. Steady your gaze, steady your breath. Coming from a lot of movement into stillness, but there's a lot of strength happening in our bodies here. So as the body is really working in your chair pose, see if you can invite the idea of more calm and stillness into the body. So invite the breath to slow down, invite the shoulders to settle, the muscles of the face relax, any arm variation you'd like to take there. Stay right here or slowly start to lift the heels coming onto the balls of your feet. Lots of work is happening in the body, but see if you can invite the idea of calm and stillness. Breathing. Good, and then lower your heels. Release the torso to hang nice and heavy over the legs. Heel to your feet a little bit wider and just hang nice and heavy. Take a generous bend to your knees and you can pull down the opposite elbows if you'd like here and slowly roll around. Really let your head go. Okay. Nice deep breaths. And we're gonna slowly find our way down to our back. So take your time to come down. You can use something supportive to help you in coming down. I'm gonna slowly roll or rock a little from side to side, allowing the hips to lower down, coming into Malasana. One of my favorite ways to come down to the ground. It's a shape we don't take often in our bodies that can be really useful. If it's not available, don't worry. Just allowing those hips to slowly lower to that point that feels comfortable and then bringing yourself down to your back. Come on down. So once you're down on your back, take a moment, hug your knees into your chest and a few little rocks from side to side. You can feel nice to sort of roll your knees in a nice circle there. Any direction that feels good. Good, and then when you're ready, allow your feet to root down. We're gonna move through bridge pose. We'll take three bridge poses. If you practice wheel and you'd like to take a wheel on any of our three bridge poses, go ahead. Feet placement can be will be dictated by you. So I like to reach forward and barely graze the backs of my heels with the fingertips, rooting the feet down about hip width apart. You can have your feet wider or further forward if you'd like, depending on, 
on the sensations in your body. So we don't want to feel sensation in the front of the knees. We want to support lifting the hips and not tension in the knees. So adjust yourself as you see fit. From here, pressing your palms down, tilt your hip points towards the ribs, roll through the spine and allow your hips to lift up. See if you can actively, again, squeeze towards the center line of the body. So the top of your thighs are gently engaged. Space between your chin and your chest. You can keep your palms down or you can bend your elbows with your fingertips up or you can reach your arms up overhead, or you could interlace your fingers behind your back. Any arm variation there, that feels good. Pressing into your feet, engaging your glutes and your hamstrings. And nice and slowly roll yourself back down and take a moment. So again, we're gonna take two more of these, a total of three. If you need to rest, rest. Give your body what it needs. Good. Let's lift again. Otherwise, resting. Tilt the hip points towards the ribs, rolling up. Breathing as you press into your feet. Feel the length in the front of the legs. So really feeling that length in your hip flexors, activated by really engaging your glutes. So if we engage the one side of our body, the other side of the body tends to want to lengthen and release. Good, rolling through your spine, release back down, take a moment. Again, rest if you'd like, or take a variation of bridge pose or wheel pose if you'd like, on your own time, lifting yourself up finding more space in the body. So thinking less about how can I get a little, we often hear get deeper into the pose or more into the pose or how much height can we get? Throw that away. Think about, can I create a little bit more space in the body? Can I breathe a little bit more through the whole body? Can I find a little bit more of a sense of ease in the pose? And nice and slowly, let's lower back down. From there, take the soles of the feet together, allow your knees to open to the side, Sukta Baddha Konasana. Just taking a moment to allow that spine to settle briefly before we hug our knees into our chest. Nice deep breath in and out. Good, and then bringing your knees into your chest, give your knees a good little squeeze, and just gently rock a little from side to side. Bring yourselves up to sit here. You can either roll to the side to come up, or if you'd like, roll forward and back on your spine a few times, get a little massage, and when you're ready, come on up. So coming up to a seated position, I'm gonna sit up on my uh, blanket. You can roll up the back of your yoga mat, just as we did earlier or I sit up on a cushion, whatever's available. And from here, we're gonna take the soles of our feet together, allow the knees to open towards the sides. So you can have your feet a little bit closer to your body, or you can allow your feet to come a little further away from the body if that's more available. And I love to begin by creating the length in the torso. So take the fingertips behind you as you lift up and out of the waist. And notice all of that space that you've created in your torso. You can stay right there. Or if you can keep a lot of that space or some of that space, start to tilt your torso forward. And it can be nice to hold on to the feet or the ankles and just gently give your, your thighs a little bit of pressure from your elbows to allow those hips to open up. But again, we don't want to force our bodies just inviting the idea into the body that it's okay it's safe here to release if the body feels really threatened or forced or pushed it's going to push back so if i really push down that body's going to push back which is fine every now and then but here i just love you to invite the idea of inviting shapes and postures into the body gently allowing the body to notice it 
recognizes it. And then it can soften into it a little bit more. Good, and then we find a little bit more space. So it's a slow process. We slowly come back up. Now from here, we're gonna come into double pigeon, which may not work for you. So I'm gonna give lots of different variations that you can choose to take. A lovely variation is to come into a cross-legged position, one shin in front of the other, or one shin on top of the other, allowing the hips to open up. And if there's available space, tilting forward. Otherwise, taking your right uh, ankle on top of your left knee and scooting your left foot forward so your right knee is on top of your left ankle. So ankles and knees are in line, like you're stacking two logs on a fire. And you can stay upright here or you can tilt forward. Another variation that you could choose to take is you could extend the bottom leg long with the ankle on top of the thigh and rotate that right hip open. Again, staying up or folding forward. Still getting the benefit of the hip stretch, but moving into available space. And we'll just take some nice deep breaths here. Allowing the body to slowly recognize so you don't have to move right away into your full range of motion, just the body slowly starts to recognize, oh, we're coming into this shape. Okay, I can breathe here. There's space, I'm a little bit more comfortable here. And then I find a little bit more space. It's like going into, you know, uh, when people do that polar swim, that cold water, sometimes you, maybe you want to shock the body and that's fine and just jump in. Otherwise, you slowly start to creep in. The body recognizes the cold water, warms up a little bit and you go a little bit further. I shouldn't speak. I've never done the polar swim and I don't think I ever will, but <laughs> I imagine it can be something like that. Let's slowly come up and we'll take the other side. So just take your legs forward and give them a little shake out. If you were taking cross-legged position, just cross the other shin in front and you might find that the sensation was different or cross the other shin on top, whichever cross-legged position you'd like to take. Otherwise, left ankle on the right knee, scoot your right foot forward so the left knee is on top of the right ankle. I like the feet flexed here not mandatory, but I like that idea so I can activate the shin and feel the knee is, is really supported there. You can stay up or you can tilt forward. And again, if it's not working for you, extend that bottom leg, ankle on top of thigh, staying up or folding forward. Any modification that you take is a sign of strength. Taking some nice deep breaths, allowing yourself to slowly enter the pose. It can be a lot more interesting if we don't just jump into poses. It can be a lot more interesting if we just take our time a little bit more and we slowly enter poses with this sense of curiosity, just noticing what's there and then we can Move around a little bit more. Good, nice and slowly, let's bring ourselves up. Take your legs forward and any movements there that you would like to take. And then we'll nice and slowly start to open up our legs nice and wide to the side. Again, seated up on something to elevate. So we're lifting out of the waist, flexing your feet pressing the thighs down, lifting up and out of your waist, softening your jaw, take your fingertips behind you, lifting up and out of the waist. Stay there or slowly bring yourself forward, taking your time, finding out where your body wants to be right now and being curious Noticing if there's more space and maybe joining. 
Maybe not. Nice, full, deep breath. And slowly start to bring yourself up. Take your time. Bend your knees, take your legs together, and take any movement you'd like to take. Now find yourself down on your back. So come on down with care again. Hug your knees into your chest. Give yourself a hug, a little squeeze. Give a few little rocks from side to side. Let your head relax. And taking your arms into a nice wide T position beside you. Allow your knees to drop over to the right. Shoulders fall nice and heavy. Take a nice deep breath in and out. Slowly bring your knees back up to center. Shift to the other side. Knees drop to the left. Hips shift to the right. Shoulders fall heavy. Allowing the body to relax. Nice deep breath in. And out, settling. Slowly ease your way back through the center and prepare for your final posture, Shavasana. So if there are any socks or sweaters you'd like to put on, go ahead. Any sips of water or final movements you'd like to take, feel free. And then find the most comfortable position for your body to rest in today. Perhaps a corpse pose, legs extended, arms extended, eyes closed, or supta baddha konasana, taking the soles of the feet together, knees open to the side, or constructive rest, soles of the feet to the outside of your yoga mat, knees fall in at center. Or invite yourself to maybe lie on your side or your belly or pad yourself up with lots of blankets and pillows or rest on your couch, your cozy chair. Allow yourself to, be, to feel held so that you can release the weight of your body down. And if you're comfortable, softly allowing the eyes to close. Feeling the experience of the parts of your body that are connected to something. And exhaling through it. Notice that the body is breathing. Relaxing your toes and your feet, your legs, and your hips, your belly and your chest, shoulders and arms, hands and fingers. Releasing some tension in your neck, your jaw, the space between your eyebrows, your forehead, and rest. And slowly begin to bring a greater awareness to your body and the space around you. And perhaps invite your breath to deepen 
or invite a little bit of movement back to your body, maybe wiggling the fingers, the toes, perhaps taking a big stretch, maybe even a yawn. And from there, in the easiest way possible, bring yourself up to a nice, comfortable seated position. And we will end our practice together today. Allow yourself to find space in the body, lifting out of the waist. Hands can rest wherever they feel best, on your body, beside your body. Hand to heart, hand to belly, or hands at prayer. And remind yourself in those moments where we are caught up in that comparing mind. Notice that the body is here. Feeling the experience of the body steady. The experience of the body breathing. And be here. And here and now, thank yourself for taking the time to practice today. And I thank you for sharing your practice with me. Stay well. Thanks for joining me today. It was great to be with you. And again, if you have any questions about the, if you have any questions at all, feel free to shoot them out or any sharings. Um, thank you, Sabrina, for placing the I Am Align Ambassador series here. So again, your code for today's class is get moving, G-E-T-M-U-V dash I-N-G. Uh, have a wonderful weekend, and I hope to see you next week on Wednesday or Friday.